Grange is a, a very typical small town. Um, a lot of people liken it to Mayberry from the old Andy Griffith series. Life in LaGrange is very much like it was 20, maybe 40 years ago. It's a little slower, a little more relaxed, and not as high, fast paced as the cities. It's a pretty tight knit community. You know, everybody knows kind of what's going on with everybody. 100 miles west of Houston sits the rural community of LaGrange, Texas, population 4,600. Last year, in the seventh, seventh grade, uh, my son Cross was um, getting in fights a lot and it got really bad and I was ready to go to the police and, and prosecute this boy because my son could not have a safe environment to learn. We need, we decided there was somebody needed to do something to try to help some of these at-risk kids. They're not bad kids, they just got nothing to do other than get in trouble. And the first day of eighth grade, I dropped all of my children off at school and went to the superintendent's office and I said, we have to do something here in LaGrange. It, we cannot go through another year like we did last year. I truly believe that uh, uh, we, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. So uh, Wendy and I started looking for a model program that we could take a look at and, and see uh, how we could provide some structure for LaGrange ISD. Wendy's research on school-based programs that provide support to at-risk kids ultimately led her to the idea of mentoring. Wendy uh, found a website with Spring Branch ISD in their mentoring program. and She shared that with me. I went to the Spring Branch website. We downloaded the information from Spring Branch, reviewed that, made contact with Spring Branch to see if we could uh, set up a visit. Located on the outskirts of Houston, Spring Branch ISD has touched the lives of almost 1,000 students since 2002, thanks to nearly 700 community mentors with the Springboard program. I was really excited one day to receive an email from a mom in LaGrange who observed that there were a lot of students in her town that needed some extra support, that really didn't have an adult in their lives to help them. And she wrote a very passionate email and asked for help if we could be a resource or provide that resource for her. Basically when they asked us to come there, they had no clue as to what, you know, where to start. They really wanted our guidance to kind of walk them through the whole process of how do you get started, where do you get your people, where do you get your mentors, what children do you mentor, how do you pick them for the program. So they really wanted to basically replicate our program over there. Linda, along with two other of her coordinators, came to LaGrange and they spent two hours with us going over the program. They covered what they felt would be needed for LaGrange ISD. We talked about different components of the program and things that we had learned over the years that we knew it would be helpful for them to include in their program. And once they determined that they wanted to have adult to student and they wanted to have a school-based mentoring program, then boy, we were off and running because we could really uh, narrow down and share our materials and share our structure and tell them what hadn't worked and what has worked. We had to help refine their um, goals to help them see where was the right starting point, help them drill down to decide maybe we don't start so big, maybe we don't look at a whole school, maybe we look at a small grade level and start with one group rather than trying to be all things to all people. We had a minor concern just because they have a large pool to pull from for mentors. They have a lot of, you know, industry there. They've got companies there that are willing to have, you know, give their people time off to come and, and mentor students. Whereas here at LaGrange, the largest employer is the district. Well, right now we don't have any, any outside funding. The school district has come up with a small budget for us for our first year. Um, and that budget is basically being used for um, paperwork, running off manuals, buying notebooks, um, buying supplies for um, activities for the kids and their mentors to, to work with. I went out and I talked to the Noon Lions Club, I talked to the Rotary Club, the Morning Lions Club. We put ads in the newspaper. We also printed out our own ads that we put around in businesses in the community, um, public places, the library, different things like that. 
um, in uh, spoken churches. Made a lot of phone calls. If I saw somebody in Walmart that I thought was really <laughs> would be a make a good mentor, I mentioned it to them. You know, have, do you know about? I mean, that's how I pulled one of my last mentors. Was he was bringing his son up here to school, so I went out and caught him <laughs> and said, you know, this is this new program that we're doing. Would you like? Would you be interested? The original commitment that we asked for from our, our mentors that we, when we first recruited them was to meet with that mentee once a week for 30 minutes and um, continue on through the rest of the school year at least and then hopefully beyond that into the next school year. And our long-term goal is for them to actually follow them all the way through high school until they graduate. I've lived around the world and, and done a lot in the business world and I think I've got a lot to give back to the community and I see this as an excellent opportunity to be able to get involved with young, young girls and make a difference in their lives. I think the biggest motivation was um, that I got a chance to help someone. Um, and that's the way I was brought up. Uh, you got a chance to help a child uh, in every way you can. If you could reach a child, uh, you could go home at night and, and you could rest a little bit because uh, uh, every child doesn't have that opportunity. I guess I just felt the need to be a positive influence in somebody's life. And I've had a lot of people help me in different ways through my life that I just felt like it was my chance to give back and to help somebody else. Our goal for our first year was to recruit 20 um, students and 20 mentors for the seventh grade. And we met that goal. We have, and we have a couple of mentors actually in waiting for next year. In October of 2008, the LaGrange Project Coordinators made a special trip to Spring Branch ISD to learn about the mentor training process. We let them just um, go through our regular two-hour training that all of our mentors go through and observe it as potential mentors and also as ones who would have to then deliver that training. We then shared with them our mentor manuals and our training PowerPoint so that they would have the opportunity to take the best of what we had and adapt it to their community. Uh, there are picnic tables out in front of the school. I think that's a perfect place to have a meeting. Um, we have two gyms at the middle school, the one they call the old gym. Through the training process, we were talking to them about where they were going to meet with their mentee, when they were going to meet with their mentee, what, what do you do with them during that 30 minutes you're with them. Be a listener. This is an important one. You're, you're not there to be the advice giver, um, this is what you need to do, that's what you don't need to do. Da -da. You really need to guide them to make choices and decisions, so a lot of it's going to be listening. We gave them a whole mentor manual that has all kinds of activities and things in it that they can do and talk about with their mentee. We were given handbooks, gone over uh, the curriculum, of what you, how to act, what you can, what you cannot do, how to, how to respond to. Uh, to uh, the children and, and, and generally to, to be there every day. When you have your meeting set up, be there every day. We also talked very, uh, very seriously about that relationship and the trust that's built into that relationship. And um, the only times that it's appropriate to break that trust is, um, you know, when there's abuse and those kinds of issues. Um, and where to go if there were those kinds of issues so that they would feel com comfortable um, if something did come up. I was a little bit uneasy about how our students would react and uh, when we did a presentation for them in the auditorium we really had a large number of students that, that really signed up and from that large number of students we had to make some, some uh, we had to employ some selection criteria as far as which ones we were going to try to assist first. This year we had 162 seventh graders in here for the program and we had 49 students that said yes we would like to have a mentor. So we had our work cut out for us because we knew we weren't going to have 49 mentors this first year. The mentoring program is really geared toward those children who are on the bubble, who have the abilities to make good decisions, who have not gone down the wrong road yet. We looked at their absentee rate. We looked at discipline. We also looked at uh, home life. We met with the counselor. And then we also made sure that we had all types of kids in there. I mean, we've got cheerleaders, we've got football players, we have those kids who don't do anything as far as UIL or athletics is concerned. We wanted to make 